right, James here. Uh, just a quick Q&A video. Um, I apologise for the noise in the background. There's actually a big thunderstorm going on outside and uh, it's absolutely chucking it down and you might be able to see some flashes and hear thunder. Uh, if I've got time, I'll film some and bang it on the end of the video for you. Anyway, uh, right, basically, the Q&A video, you get the idea by now. You've probably seen the others. Send me an email, ask me any question at all any question you like and if I know the answer I'll answer it if not I'll try and find somebody who does um, right anyway the, the email I got this time wasn't that bizarre to be honest it's a pretty normal one so uh, here's the email hi James uh, I just wanted to ask a quick question I think you might know the answer to uh, I'm not a mechanic but I looked in your channel description and saw that you were so I thought you would be the right person to ask for this well, we'll see what the question is first right my question is this, what is the purpose of a relay? Like I said, I'm not a mechanic, but I have a very basic knowledge of how these things are wired. And from what I can understand, a switch in the car, for example a headlight switch, is connected to a relay. Then the relay is connected to the headlights. So if a relay is just an electrical switch, you're switching a switch to switch another switch to turn on the headlights. That's the part I don't really understand. Why not just connect the lights directly to a switch on the car's dashboard? There's probably a really obvious and simple reason why, but it's just something I never understood. Thank you for taking the time to answer my question. All the best, Mark. Right. Okay. What's the purpose of a relay in a car? Well, in a car, the main purpose for a relay is to act as a secondary switch, like you said in the email, a switch to switch another switch. You're probably scratching your head and thinking, why would you want to do that? Now, first of all, for those of you who don't know what a relay is, this is a relay. All right, just give you a quick close-up here. Now, this is a relay. Now, if you've never seen one of these before, you probably won't know what it does or what it's for. Uh, I'll explain that further on in the video, but for now, uh, let's have a quick look inside this. I've got a screwdriver here. Let's just uh, get this thing open, and we'll have a look inside, and I'll show you basically what's inside one. Let me pull the case off here. Right, now... If you have a look in here, you can see there you've got a large coil of wire and you've got a piece of metal, a cylindrical metal that runs right the way through that coil. And here you have a thing called a latch plate. And on there is two contacts. Now can you see those contacts? When I press on that, you see those contacts open and close. And what happens is when you put a current through that coil, it creates a magnetic field which turns that piece of metal through the middle into a magnet and the magnet attracts this plate here and closes the circuit. So when you apply a current to these two pins here, to this coil, it closes the circuit. When you take the current away, it opens the circuit. So it's kind of like an electronic switch, really, that's instead of activated by your finger pressing it, it's activated by uh, a small amount of power put to these two pins. So there you go, that's basically how a relay works, and this is basically what one looks like, although they do come in all different shapes and sizes, and, and different power ratings as well. You can see this one is 12 volts, and it can switch 2 times 20 amps, because you see there's two contacts in there. So it's two contacts and switch 20 amps. Uh, now I have got loads of these downstairs, but I won't show you all of them, I'll just show you basically this one, which is your basic switch relay. Now, the reason why relays are in cars um, is something to do with the reason why most cars have two fuse boxes. Uh, you'll find a fuse box normally in the engine compartment with, near the engine and a fuse box inside the car, normally sort of underneath the passenger side wing, uh, passenger footwell or in a glove box or something. Uh, and the reason why that is, is because all of the things that draw high amounts of current, like the starter motor, the ignition system, um, the headlights, all of the exterior lights, stuff like that, things that uh, you know deal with high amounts of current will be on the outside fuse box because the cables on that one are much thicker and it's easier to route thicker cables around the engine bay than it is to try and bring very thick cables into the car to you know wire to a switch. But the main reason is because the fact that a car battery will only put out you know, just over 12 volts, but it can actually cope with drawing about 70 amps. Now that's quite a lot. Uh, that's an average car battery. Some can pull more than that. Uh, but average is about 70 amps. Now, 
if you imagine, for example, for, just imagine that your plug socket in your house is connected to a ring main. Now that ring main can only put out 32 amps if it's a ring main, if it's a fuse at 30 amps. Yes, it's quite a considerable amount considering it's, you know, only a car, really. But it's, it depends on what is being used. Right, now, this is the kind of cable you typically find on a starter motor in the car. And you can see it's quite thick and it's quite hard to bend. Um, but that's only one cable inside there, one big thick cable. And you'd actually need two of these to every starter motor. You'd need one for positive and one for negative. So you imagine having a cable like that running into the dashboard inside the car to a switch. Now bearing in mind this cable can cope with 80 amps. This bit of cable is rated at 80 amps and your starter motor generally pulls 70 to 75 amps. So you know the, the switch inside the car would also have to be rated at 80 amps and that switch would be absolutely huge. So instead of doing it that way you have a cable like this on the starter motor itself and then you have a cable like this which is considerably thinner on the switch inside the dashboard or on the ignition barrel or whatever it is. Here is a quick animation which will show you how the system actually works. Now just a quick basic animation here just to show you how this system actually works. Uh, before we look at that let's look at the basic layout starting with what all the parts are. Now first of all we've got the battery, the ignition barrel, that's where your key goes, the relay and the starter motor itself. Now let's uh, go back to the relay and have a closer look at this, what we're interested in. Now the relay is made up of a few different parts, in the middle here you've got this coil and the job of this coil is to actually create a magnetic field and that piece of metal that's stuck through the middle of the coil becomes a magnet when you put a current through that coil and the magnetic field that's created attracts this part here and that's called the latch plate and what happens is when you do put a current through that coil it attracts that plate in the direction of that arrow and when that happens this gap at the top here closes up and that closes the circuit now I should mention here as well that the actual latch plate is spring loaded so once you've um, taken the current away from that coil it will just spring back into the original position it won't sort of stay where it's put. Right okay so now you've got a basic knowledge of how the relay actually works let's have a look at how the whole system works. Now you turn the key in the ignition and you get Right, now what actually happened there, let's have a look at what happened step by step. Now first of all you turn the key in the ignition which switches and completes the circuit between the battery and the coil inside the relay. Now the coil inside the relay is now energised and it's emitting an electromagnetic field which attracts that latch plate which snaps into place and that then completes the circuit between the battery and the starter motor and it begins to turn illustrated here by some crazy non-symmetrical arrows which I've just drawn in with paint shot. Also other mechanics out there may notice that this actually looks nothing like a starter motor but you get the idea it was just to make it look simple. Anyway back to the point when you turn the key in the ignition hopefully you will get this. And as you can probably hear my starter motor is actually on its way out. Also one thing to add as well is once the engine's actually running fully and the starter motor's done its job and the engine's kicked over and it's running, the solenoid inside the starter motor will actually retract and the motor will stop spinning. Now that circuit is also controlled by another relay or another set of relays. So now you can see why there's so many of these things inside uh, cars because they have more than one use, they have loads of uses. So there you go, hopefully you've understood what's going on by watching this animation, hopefully it was clear enough and simple enough. So there you go, uh, I hope this answers your question, I hope it was easy enough to follow. Uh, if you've got any more questions, just leave me a comment or send me a personal message or whatever and uh, I'll try and answer it if I, know the qu if I know the answer. If not, I'll find somebody else who does. There you go, I hope this video was a help, thank you for watching. Nice one. Right now the storm's actually drawn a bit closer now, so as promised I'll film a bit of the uh, lightning for you. Oh, there we go. There's a bit. Oh, it's typical, isn't it? Right when I need the camera, the memory card's full up. So I've had to try and run around and find another memory card, and the storm's actually gone over now, so I've missed it all. It's just absolutely pissing it down right now, so... 
Well, we don't want to watch that because, um, especially us British, we should know what rain looks like. Anyway, thank you for watching. Nice one. Oh, shit. Oh, mate, that was too close for my life.